Cool, we're recording. Um, yeah, I guess let's get started. I don't know why some people were here temporarily and then left. I'm not sure if they're logging in on new devices. I think some of them are. But I guess we can have some extra time for the assessments as well. Let's see. Okay, cool. So they were logging in on other devices. That makes sense. Um, okay, so here is... Oh, wrong thing. That's not a link to the test. Uh, oh, I just got it from my Gmail. Should have maybe shortened the URL a bit. Ah. Ooh, it's really, there we go. Oh, what is going on? There we go. It's sending like that. There we go. Okay, that is a link to the Google Forms, um, and it's just got a test there, and you just fill in each cell. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. And I'll give you. I'll work through it now as well. And um, yeah, you can just go. I obviously won't be giving you the answers, and I won't be sharing my screen, of course. But if you guys have any questions not directly related to the answer of each question, I can help you with those. But yeah, otherwise, for the first sort of 45 minutes to an hour of this lecture, we're just going to be working through that, that URL. Yeah, sort of. It's more just to gauge where you guys are and what you're struggling with, see if we need to do any revision on a particular topic from Chapter 1. But yeah, it's basically just an assessment for Chapter 1 knowledge. Similar to what we did last week, except this time I'm not working through it with you. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to post in the chat. As long as the question isn't something like, what is the answer to question four?
unfortunately they can't format the code nicely in Google Forms. Although surely Google Forms can use Markdown. Yeah, you should be able to. How are things going, guys?
Yeah, so for the coding questions, I would recommend maybe copying down the code onto a piece of paper and it might make se more sense to you because I can barely read it the way they formatted it in the Google Forms. Um, but you can see just before they'll give you like 01, 02 colon, 03 colon, and that's just the line number, right? So it can be quite easy to copy down the code into another format. Yeah, yeah, the star means times. Does code. I'll say yes, Saham, it does. C -c kind of. <laughs> it's a bit confusing. Because it will always go left to right still okay so how do I put this without giving away too much so it'll do division and multiplication first but won't do necessarily do division before multiplication it'll always go left to right that means divide kind of Oh wow, if you guys are already on that question, you're making pretty good progress. But yeah, it follows bot mass.
Oh, and when you finish, just post done in the chat so I can gauge. Because um, it looks like if you guys are already on that question, things are going pretty good. You're almost done, basically. Look up in the in the chat, Yuvia. Connor asked. Oh, I guess maybe you didn't hear. Divide, divide. Yeah, I'll come to think of it, uh, we didn't do any divide examples prior to this, so it would be confusing. But yeah, asterisk, you know, is times from the recursion example. Hmm. Have we already never done a divide example? Ah, that was silly of me to overlook. I guess it's in your in the operators table. But yeah, slash means divide. You can picture it as a fraction, right? Scroll down. Um, I I don't I don't know if you'll get back results. I think the form just updates to the, them, and they'll tell me what I must focus more on with you guys. But we'll go through the test together now. So when everyone's finished, and see exactly what people were struggling with and what we should spend some more time on. By the way, I see some people joined afterwards, right? Yeah, we've got more than when I posted the link. Do you know what, does everyone else know what we're doing? Are you guys following along? You saw the chat and stuff, right? Because some people did join a bit late. But Thelma, are you already finished? No, okay, cool. I was about to say, wow, that was quick.
you think maybe some people will get a little bit freaked out with the second last question but I'm looking forward to see what, what you guys think of that one question 16 is the second scenario question so we would have gone through it if I didn't see that it is in the test Mm, mm. Yeah, it is tough, but think more about, hmm, think maybe less about interpreting the flowchart and more about interpreting the possible answers around like what topics we've covered and things like that. Okay, because the flowchart, it would be quite tough for you guys to go through it step by step, probably. <clears throat> so rather especially just because of the number they gave it would take quite long to go through step by step so rather think about like what the sort of higher principle that flowchart is trying to represent you have seen it before 
Um, in fact, we've programmed that before. You've seen that programmed before. But yeah, 16 is a bit of a tough one. It is it is a whole scenario question sort of summarized in a multiple choice. So yeah, it is it is a bit tough.
Awesome. We'll wait a bit longer, obviously. Yeah, you guys have at least 10 more minutes, okay. Cool, cool. Wow, cool. Oh, wait, no, I told you guys the guess, guess see rule. Maybe that's what's happening here. Um, well, you're creating, you're creating a variable, right? So they say fact equals one. So it's just a variable, its name is fact, and its value is one initially that's that's all I can say on that there No problem. Thirty-five, but they'll be across all six chapters. Although they they don't seem to test one of the chapters ever, but we do still cover it, or test it much rather.
but um, so the next section object oriented programming that's quite difficult that'll take us quite long to cover um, but then the sections after that become a little bit easier I think up until the last one because then it's more theory rather than actual learning the basics of programming you know usually we end up revising this kind of or I mean I've only worked with a few before you but at least from what I saw from Bryanston's class last year we revised this stuff quite a lot before the test like how to read flowcharts and things like that We are about four four minutes left, guys. Um, preferably. Again, don't rush though. I know some of you arrived late, so maybe we'll extend it a little bit. So those of you who have finished, you can go get a glass of water or something. But check back because we are going to go through the whole test together because I think that'll be quite beneficial. So am I able to... Oh, you are able to. Um, we'll just keep your first mark because you know you gave your name and stuff last time. Um, yeah, I didn't make the Google form, so I don't know. It is a bit annoying because if you if you make it on Google that you want one answer per person, then it requires you to log into your Google account, Google account, which it just adds a whole other thing. So yeah, asking for the information like names and stuff just works but yeah just don't submit again because it'll just make whoever's going to be reviewing them it'll make their life a bit difficult although they did share the same link with all of the tutors so I wonder if all of the different students at all the schools are going to be submitting to the same form that will be a nightmare to actually read through. Um, but still, it's good to practice like this. Why wow? <laughs> I do like this gift thing in 
and stickers in Microsoft Teams. Cool guys, so start finishing up now. If you're not finished yet, can you just post where you are? So I can see if anyone needs e extra time or something. If no one posts, I'll assume you're done. <laughs> oh no, is Benelli having problems again? Why isn't he in the... Oh, okay, people are replying. I'm done. Ooh, yes, good idea. Good idea. You need more time for question 16. Okay, okay. No, that's fair, that's fair. Um, I was thinking, because after the test, since you guys just wrote a test and it was 50 minutes, we would be taking a 10 minute break now if we were lecturing anyway. 100% done. Ooh. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's a nice one. Um, <laughs> yeah, all, all the people who have already told me they're done, have voted done. Nice. Okay, yeah, so Zareen, um, or oh, Zirin, sorry. We'll take, we'll take a, a break now, and, you know, if you guys are writing <laughs> for the last 10 minutes of the break, I guess I can't stop you. I suppose the test isn't timed anyway, so if they wanted it to be timed, they should have timed it. Hypothetically, it could just stay open forever. But I guess there's no benefit to cheating because it doesn't count for marks anyway. Um, so yeah, let's... For those of you who have finished the test, we're on a 10 minute break. You can go to the bathroom, have some water, eat something since it is around lunch. Actually, maybe we should start another poll as well towards the end of the lesson to decide what time we can agree on for a fixed time. Um, let's see how right. Hmm. 
but we'll see about that towards the end. Okay, yeah, so for those of you who aren't done, you have until 3 o'clock. Um, for those of you who are, or if you finish in between then and now, we're on, we're on break until 3, and at 3 I'm going to start going through the test with you guys, okay? Um, and we'll also finish up the scenarios, that we the last three scenarios that we didn't cover last week, and I think that'll probably be it for today, but we'll see. So reconvene at three. Oh, I um students and students. I think the highest we've got with students was eighty-eight, and that was like a grade nine. Um, I. I actually not bragging, but I scored the the highest for choosers. But um, that's not that impressive because I only got eighty nine, so that student who was in grade nine only got one percent less than me.
But it's because, you know, in multiple choice tests, there's always trick questions, right? So those are what you lose marks on. Look, now Connor's going to study super hard and he's going he's gonna to beat my score. That'd be embarrassing. But I had a competition going with another tutor as well. So I also studied quite a bit. No, you could. I mean, covering this stuff for a whole year gives you a lot of time to prepare. Like, by then you'll feel quite comfortable with, comfortable with most things. Like, hopefully after these two assessments, you guys should already be feeling quite comfortable with Chapter 1's content. Not 100%, but, you know, you should be getting there. And... Mm, yeah. As I, I think the sections get easier, easier from now. I made some stupid... Oh, okay. I mean, that always happens, though. And these multiple choice tests, they're tricky. They always put, like, weird... They have to put weird things, because it's the only way to make the test kind of difficult. How much did I get for the test, you mean, Saham? The one you're writing at the end of the year, or...? Ah, okay. Oh, were, were you guys told your marks? Were you guys told what you got? Oh, that's cool. How, how did things go? What did you guys get? Don't feel embarrassed, because obviously it's not like a... It's not a super huge deal, because you guys haven't seen many of these multiple choice questions before. No one's posting, everyone's like suddenly, oh wait, I don't want them to see. Okay, unlucky. Unlucky. Okay, okay. Well, is past 50, Yuvia? Or is past 70? <laughs> No, but passing, passing's good for now. Because, yeah, there are one or two questions in there that you guys... On the final test, yeah. On this one, there is no pass, because the marks are just... This is just to see what you guys are doing well on. And what you guys are struggling with. But yeah, it's valuable to do things like these. Ooh, okay, so if Yuvier is saying a pass is 70 and he passed, then that's fantastic. Well done, Yuvier. Seventy lies so much. It's because it's multiple choice, so you know you have to you have to do those kinds of things. Hmm. Question 10, I thought it was 12 as a number, not 12 digits. Let's see. Uh, 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, if, if it was 12 as a number, but sh surely they wouldn't have said very large number and then said 12. Who calls 12 a very large number? But fair enough, it just shows you must read carefully, hey? <laughs> you can picture it, it's like, oh, um, yeah. How, how many apples do you have? Oh, I have a very large number of apples. Three. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, for those of you who haven't finished up yet, um, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Maybe guess the rest or something, because we must we must start going through them now. And yeah, then it's been a while. Okay. So yeah, so you guys think you agree we should go through the test together? Probably will make sense. I'm confused on question 16. I didn't understand that you were supposed to multiply all the answers. Oh, okay. Huh. I suppose since we're done now, do you? Can anyone tell me what the flowchart in question 16 was calculating? Out of interest. You have seen it before, but what's the word? The value of fact? Yeah, yeah, but what's fact? What, what is it? Uh, it has a name. So the loop keeps going if n is greater than 1, sure. <laughs> yeah, fact is a variable, but there there's a mathematical operation that that flowchart is performing. You guys only would have learnt about it like last week or the week before, so I'm not super surprised that there might be some confusion. But what was that mathematical operation called? When did we count down exclamation point we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere what is it called <laughs> ooh no 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 we we used recursion to calculate it that's true we used recursion but if I say five exclamation point, what am I saying? Five. The name of the variable should give it away, actually. <laughs> okay. okay, so recursion is when a method calls itself. And as an example of recursion, we used five well, like a mathematical operation. It was fact something. Factorial. Finally, yes, that's the one. Okay. So that flowchart, that flowchart is calculating the factorial. That's what it's doing. So yeah, that's that's right, Saham. It is. It's calculating the factorial. But what, what answer did you guys give for that? Um, can I get some, let's see, it was, so A is 720, B 120, C 24, D 6. What, what did you guys say? When you input 5, what does it give you? Yeah, yeah, the answer is 120. Okay, but we'll we'll go through this question later and see step by step. Okay, you also said six. Interesting, okay. Ooh, lots of sixes. Sheesh. Okay. But yeah, you see, if you could see that the, the flow chart was calculating the factorial and just sort of glean that. Okay, well done, Ria. Um, if you could see that the flow chart was calculating the factorial, then you can instantly answer that question, right? Because then you just know 5 factorial is 120, so no problem. Yeah. But if you couldn't see that it was calculating the factorial, then that question would be quite hard, because it's quite a complicated flowchart. 
but you'll see we'll I'll, I'll translate that that flowchart directly into code and then we can um, you'll you'll recognize it you'll recognize the code all right can you guys see my screen because we knew that it was going lower so we chose the lowest answer oh <laughs> okay that's interesting interesting logic I mean so uh, you can see kind of flowcharts it's nice to see loops in flowcharts right because that would have been the first flowchart in which you have seen a loop and and it's nice because you can literally see the arrow looping right you can see the arrow looping so it's quite cool to be able to actually see that and then maybe if you could connect in your head because so there's a loop there right and it was counting down it said n equals n minus one and where is the only place we've seen a loop counting down in this course it was when we were calculating the factorial right we revised how we could use a for loop to count down the same flange yeah yeah it is it's it's scenario two that's what i was saying that's the reason we didn't cover the scenarios yeah it's the exact same one that's the reason I didn't cover the scenarios before you did the test because um, yeah if we covered the scenarios first you would have known the answer so because I was planning last week to do scenarios and then test but I went through the test before I um, started the meeting and I saw that okay we can't do the scenarios first so what are we doing now? Okay, now we're going to go through the test you just wrote question by question and see what you guys were struggling with. And I want to gauge what the class was thinking at each question and maybe revise some of the harder topics. Okay. I, th I think it'll be beneficial even though you have just seen it all. Cool, so let's do this. Okay, I have the test open here. The, we should be able to get through it very quickly. I'm not expecting this to take longer than like 15 minutes. Okay, so question one. You need to gain a better understanding of the solution before writing the program. You decide to develop an algorithm that lists all the necessary steps to perform an operation in the correct order. Any technique that you should use to minimize the complexity and ambiguity. Which of the following techniques should you use? Okay, can I get some answers in the chats? So tutorial is like seven multiplied by every whole number less than seven. Yeah, that's correct, Yvia. So someone said one. Okay, A, yeah. Yeah, let's use A, B, C, D, because one okay uh, or if we're settling on one but let's pick one okay yeah everyone is agreeing flowchart flowcharts that is correct this this one is flowcharts so you can see occasionally a lot of the multiple choice questions you're going to get a few free marks so it almost makes sense that the pass mark is 70 percent right okay cool so which of the following languages is not considered a high level programming language this one is a bit maybe a bit tough to remember from so early in the course Ooh, okay, I'm impressed. Someone says C. C, C, C. Awesome. Okay, yeah, you guys are all correct. I'm glad you guys remember. Okay, um, you are writing code for a business application by using C sharp. You write the following statement to declare an array. Int, square bracket, so it's an array. Numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, semicolon. Now you need to access the second item in this array, the number two. Which of the following expressions do you use? Numbers in position zero, numbers in position one, numbers in position two, or numbers in position three. So what's the answer there? I, oh wait, was this you guys answering this? I don't know. So is it A, B, C, or D, guys? Because we have a list. And some people say B. So I mean we can we can look, right? So we've got this list numbers, alright? And it's got five things in it. One, two, three, four, five. Now guys, this question is very easy, alright? Because all you have to remember about lists, basically, 
is that we start counting at zero. All right. So if I want to get two out of this list, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Numbers in position zero is one. Okay. Numbers in position one is two. Okay. Because we start counting at zero. So this is position zero. This is position one, position two, position three, position four. Okay. So numbers in position zero, this would give you one. Numbers in position one would give you two. Numbers in position two would give you three. And numbers in position three would give you four. Okay, so the answer is B. Okay. Cool. Um, now, you are developing a C sharp program. You write the following code. Int x equals 10 int y equals plus plus x, int z equals y plus plus. What will be the value of the variable c after all the above statements are executed? A bit tough. Okay, some people are saying c. Let me see. Ooh, some e. Did everyone say c? Do we agree with Sachin? Who, who says what? Someone says d. So someone says g. Connor says 13. Huh. Where do we get 13? So, do, okay, let me, let me ask you this. So, someone says 12. Okay. Should we just code this one up to see, see who's right? Okay. So this was a tricky one. If you remember, if you remember last, um, last week, we covered the different the difference between plus plus x and x plus plus, right? You guys remember that, okay? But but let's just program it up, okay? So we've got int x equals ten, okay? Int x equals ten. Int y equals was was the first one plus plus x, yeah, okay plus plus x and the second one int z equals y plus plus they did say y plus plus not they weren't being tricky right yeah they did say y plus plus good and then we say console dot right line um, z okay cool so the answer here is 11 okay you see it's 11 Yeah, okay, so here it says 11 afterwards. Ping. Oh, yeah, sorry, let me mute my phone actually. There you go. Cool. So, um, the answer here is 11, which we were saying, so this is B. B. Um, but let me, let me explain why one more time. Okay, so you must remember to this plus plus x thing and y and y plus plus it's 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 a subtle difference okay but you must remember to read this bit left to right all right okay so so let's go through it line by line int x equals 10 okay so i'm just creating a variable called x its value is initially 10 all right so let's see i'll say x has a value of 10. All right. Okay, so what happens on this line here? So I create a new variable y, all right? So the instance I create it, we, we haven't assigned a, a value yet, okay? And this is, this is the value we're going to assign, okay? And we're gonna read it from left to right. So we go plus plus, all right, so that means add one. We're gonna add one to the variable that follows this. Okay, and it's x. Okay, so x had a value of 10 on this first line. And we're, with these two plus pluses, we're adding one to that, okay? So x has value 11, all right? And then, after I've added one to it, I set y's value to x, okay? So this line is saying, 
y has, ooh, sorry, x has value 11, y ha has value, I'm going to say x, but x means 11 now, right? Okay, so what this means is we added 1 to x, and then we assigned y's value to x. Okay, so you the plus plus comes first. Okay, so the difference maybe you'll notice after the next line. So we say on the next line we create another variable z and we say it equals y. Alright, what is y's value? Right? Y's value is eleven currently. Okay? Its value is eleven. And then after that, so we've we've read y's value. So this line is saying z has value um, 11 and then plus plus, okay, the plus plus comes afterwards, we say y has value 12. Okay. So by the end of this code, the variable y, and we can see this, okay, so by the end of this code, um, the variable x has value 11. Um, so I'll print them all out on, on different lines so that we can really hopefully start to see. Because this, it is, it is a bit tricky, okay? So now I'm printing out all of the variables so we can see at the end of the code what everything's value is, okay? At the end of this code, x has the value 11, y has the value 12, and z has the value 11. Okay, see, so x's value is 11, y's value is 12, z's value is 11. Let me see, are there any questions yet? So it does add 1 to y, okay, it does. But you must see that it returns the value before it adds 1, okay? So if the y is first, then it goes, what is y's value? And it gives it back. It goes, okay, y's value is 11. Then it sees the plus plus, and it adds 1 to it. Okay. And it adds 1 to it. Afterwards, though, it's already given back the value. Okay. It is, it is a bit tricky. It's subtle. But once you see it, it does make sense. Okay, so... Um, for example, let me let me change it this way. Okay, so you see this is currently y plus plus. Okay, so what this does is it goes okay. The value of y here before I've added one to it is eleven. Okay, so it says okay z equals y y is eleven. Okay, the plus plus comes afterwards and then it goes okay I'm going to add one to y. But it's already assigned the value of c, z to what y's value was before. Okay. But if I change this, so if I remove this plus plus and I put it here. Okay. So now what it's doing is it sees, okay, it creates z. Then it goes, okay, I'm going to add 1 to y. And then after, after the plus plus, okay. So after I've added 1, I'm going to return the value of y. Okay. So now you'll see instead of 11, 12, 11, it will be 11, 12, 12. Okay. So this is when the plus plus comes before instead. Okay. When the plus plus comes before. Okay. But if it comes after, then it's 11, 12, 11. Yeah. So let me, I'll, I'll write out what's happening, okay? So plus plus, or let me write it out in the actual NetBeans in the comments, okay? So I'll say plus plus y adds 1 and then returns y, okay? y plus plus I should say adds 1 to y. Okay. y plus plus returns y and then adds 1 to y. Okay.
So you can you see the difference now. Yes, yes, okay. What's this? Is it another one of those dots? Oh, okay. Um, all right. So is is everyone okay with this? Anyone? If anyone in the chat is not okay with this, please post and say stand. So plus plus y, the plus plus comes first, right? It adds 1 to y and then returns y. y plus plus returns y and then adds 1 to y. Maybe even putting a little comma here could help. So yeah, just think about the plus plus. Yeah, yeah, basically. But then also you must you must be careful though, right? Because if I ask you something like this, let me so let me clean this up. So I'm going to delete. I'm going to remove everything. Let's let's stick to using y. Okay, so I'm going to say y int y equals ten. All right, so if I print out, I'm just going to print out y here. Okay, so I'm just printing out y. All right. If I say y plus plus here, okay, you can see this does print out 11. All right. Because this goes, okay, return the value of y, but it's not returning it anywhere. And then it says, okay, add 1 to y. So it does actually add 1 to y. And then we print out y on the next line, right? So in this case, using either way, okay, either way will print out 11, right? Whether it's plus plus y or y plus plus, it'll print out 11, okay? But if I don't do it on this line, if I do it inside where I'm printing it, right? So y plus plus here, this will print out 10, okay, because it goes, okay, what is the value of y, return that, it's 10, and then it adds 1, but if I say plus plus, then it goes add 1 and then return the value, okay. So y plus plus, both of them will add 1 to y. Okay. Plus plus y and y plus plus both add 1 to y. Okay. What matters is w whether they return the value of y first or add 1 first. Okay. So plus plus y adds 1 and then returns the value y plus plus returns the value and then adds one okay but both of them add one both of them add one yeah so let me let me do it this way as well okay so i'm going to print out y twice okay so here i don't add one okay so i'm just saying console.writeLine y, y's value is 10, console.writeLine y, y's value is 10, so it just prints out 10, 10, okay, 10, 10, you see? If here I go y plus plus, okay, so this will return the value of y, which is 10, and then add 1, okay, so this line will print out 10, okay, but it does add 1 to y, you can see the plus plus, it does add 1 to y, okay? This then prints out the value of y, okay? It goes, it just goes and gets the value of y, okay? This is 11, all right? So this will print out um, 10, 11, okay? 10, 11, see? If I put the plus plus in front instead, okay? Now this will add 1 to y, so it'll make y 11, 
and then it will return the value of y okay and then this one will also just return the value of y okay so this prints out 11 11 okay but both of them are adding one do you guys see what what's happening there Do you understand? Now you understand. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I thought you guys understood this after last week, but apparently it's still a bit... It is a bit tough, though. It is a bit tough. It's a very subtle difference. Yeah, it does. It just compares the two things. So, Thelma, we can, we can look at that now if you want. So we can just say y equals I don't know if C sharp will it allow me to print out something like this yeah it does okay so if I just print out y this guys this is now totally different from plus plus okay don't take the idea that the operator has two things as meaning they're the same okay um, plus plus adds one okay to the variable but equals equals just compares the thing on the left to the thing on the right okay so currently I said actually let's not even use a variable here let me just say okay so it'll just look at the thing on the left 10 compare it to the thing on the right if they're the same you can see it will return true okay so you can see 10 is the same as 10 so it returns true but if this if the thing on the left is anything different from the thing on the right, then it returns false. Okay, if they're both 11, then it will return true. If one of them is 12, then it will return false. Okay, so that's all this is doing. 120, false. 110 equals equals 120, false. 120 equals equals 120, true. So that's all equals equals is doing. It returns true if the thing on the left is the same as the thing on the right, and it returns false if the thing on the left is different from the thing on the right. That's all equals equals is doing. And there's no complicated tricks there. Does that answer your question, Thelma? Okay. Shall we go on to the next question then okay yes awesome okay so uh, question five you are writing a method named print report that doesn't return a value in the calling code which keyword should you use in your method declaration to indicate this fact this might be a bit tough for you guys because a someone says a okay let's let me see oh wow Okay, great. Okay, I guess this wasn't so tough for you guys then. Yeah, it, it, it is a void. Okay. I don't remember covering... Oh, wait, we did we did cover that. We, we went through how to create a method, and if it doesn't return something, then you say void. Okay, I'm glad you guys got that. Oh, you got it wrong earlier. Oh, unlucky. Okay, but, but yeah, it is a. Awesome. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay. You need to provide... A complex multi-way branching in your C-sharp program, you need to make sure that your code is easy to read and understand. Which of the following C-sharp statements should you use? Pretty complicated wording. Oh, wow. Okay, Saham, you are on a roll. You're on a roll. That is correct. Yuvia, you also got it. Fantastic. Yeah, it is D, the switch statements. You see, they were a bit tricky here, right? They said they gave you the word case and the word switch um, and you had to know that it was called a switch okay well done guys um, okay I'm, I'm impressed that you guys got those too easily okay you are writing a c-sharp program that iterates through a collection such as arrays and lists you need to make sure that you process each item in the collection once you also need to ensure that your code is easy to read and to debug which of the following C sharp, C sharp statements provide the best solution for this requirement? A bit complicated read wording, but it is easy. Okay, someone says C, 
Someone says A, okay. So another person says C. Guys, other people answer because there's we're getting Okay, A, C, C, C. Okay. Um so it seems to be between A and C, let's see. Okay, so we say you are writing a C sharp program that iterates through a collection. Okay. Now if I just stop reading there, okay, if I just read iterates through a collection, what do I want you guys to be thinking about? Okay, now everyone's saying C. Okay, so yeah guys, so when you're reading these questions, don't get caught up in all of this whole paragraph, okay? The important information is usually one or two words, okay? So when I say iterate through a collection or iterate through an array or print an array or anything like this, any basically anything to do with going over an array, okay, or a collection or a list, whatever they call it, for each loop, okay, just think for each, for each, for each, okay, yeah, cool, so that's C. Um, you are developing a C-sharp program that needs to perform five iterations. All right. You write the following code. Um, oh, it's, I, I just like reading code like this, but let's just go with it. Int count equals zero. Okay. Um, so our code, our loop starts at zero. Okay. While count less than or equal to five. All right. Um, line three is just a parentheses. Print out the value of count, whatever, count plus plus, and then close the loop. Okay. When you run the program, you notice that the loop does not iterate five times. What should you do to make sure that the loop is executed exactly five times? A bit tricky. A bit tricky. Oh, wow. Guys, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Really. Okay, it is the same people spamming the answer though, so, um, but, but yes, the answer is A, the answer is A. Do you, <laughs> aka only you, yeah. Okay, wait, jo um, does anyone, we, should we go over this question? Should we code it up and see? Should we code it up? Let's, let's do it. Okay, so we say our first line is int count equals zero. Okay, so let's do this int count equals zero okay so that was our first line then we say while count less than or equal to five Oop. while count less than or equal to five okay then they go to the next line and open this curly brackets okay like that then we just print out they do a whole complicated printing out thing i'm just going to say print out counts okay and then we say count plus plus. All right, so that's the code they gave us. Okay, and they say you want this to run five times, but we can see it runs zero, one, two, three, four, five. It runs six times. Okay, runs six times. Did we get a new student? Not sure. Oh, oh, because you said because he spelled you via wrong. Um. So, culture sorry. Okay. Um, so we can see that this does run um, six times, okay? And they're asking how can we change it to make it run um, five times? Okay, so they give us a few options. They say change the code in line one to int count equals one. We know this is the answer. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, we'll review that one last, okay? So then they say, change the code in line two to while count equals equals five. Okay, so let's try that. So here we say less than or equal to five. What happens if instead I say equal to equal to five? So what happens now? Well, we can say this code will not run at all, right? It won't, you see, it doesn't print anything. No, no, no. The, the lesson ends at four. Yeah. 
two hours. It's always two hours. Um, okay, so... Yeah, cool. Um, so this code doesn't run at all. Why? Okay, so we say int count equals zero. Okay, we then check. Um, we say while counts is the same as five. Okay, so we, we say counts is zero. Ooh, counts is zero. And then we say while counts is five. So this just does nothing. Okay, because counts is never five. Okay, we said that counts is, is zero. Okay, if I made this five, this would run once. All right, you can see it runs once. Just prints out five. Okay. So hopefully you guys get that. This this B doesn't work. Okay. We then say change the code in line two. Okay. So we say change change the line in code two to greater than or equal to five. Again, this will never run, right? Because we say counts is equal to zero, and then we say while counts is more than five. So it's never more than five. So nothing happens. Okay. Then we say change the code in line five to plus plus count. So they say keep this the same, keep this less than or equal to, and all they change is they move the plus plus from this end to the beginning. Um, but we'll see this still run six times, right? It's the same. Um, it's exactly the same as just putting the count plus plus here, um, because obviously putting the plus plus afterwards does make a difference we've just seen that it can make a difference in some cases but here it's just adding one to count right and here it's just adding one to count they do the same things okay so the answer is a which was to change this to one okay and then we just get one two three four five so everyone good on that question? You guys answered it quite quickly, so that's cool. So A. Okay, um, question nine. This is why people were asking about the bod mass. Okay, and I mean, for this we can just see, right? So it is, it's 13, because we say four times four, that's 16, divided by two, that's eight, plus six, <coughs> that's 14 minus 1 that's 13 okay so we can see if we say int d equals 6 plus 4 times 4 divided by 2 minus 1 okay and then say console.write line d okay and we run this um ooh, it keeps doing why did it print so many times that's weird okay it looks like dot net fiddle is a bit confused oh right i put it in a while loop i'm so silly okay sorry about that okay now when i run this it prints out 13 once okay i i don't know why i printed that out so many times okay so yeah there you go see it just prints out 13 so it does no bod mass Thirteen, thirteen. Yeah, it's thirteen. Okay, because because C sharp does no bot mass. So just remember that, and none of those questions will be tricky to you. Cool. All right. So this is B. Okay. Um, you are writing a C sharp program that needs to manipulate very large integer values. You may exceed twelve digits. Um, the values can be positive or negative. Which data type should you use to store a variable like this? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. D, it's long. I mean, the fact that they put the word manipulate there is a bit weird, but don't, don't even think about that. The point is, long numbers, long. Okay, that's the answer. All right. Um... This one, very long question, but you've seen basically exactly this question before. Um, okay, wait, now, so, 
yeah yeah long 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 cool so everyone's correct um, so now we're on to the next question okay 11 11 so we say you have written a C-sharp method that opens a database connection by using S uh, the SQL connect object this is totally irrelevant to you you don't don't care about that um, the point is we've got some connection to something okay the method retrieves some information from the database and then closes the connection whatever you need to make sure that your code fails gracefully when there is a database error to handle this situation you wrap the database code in a okay this matters to you this is the first bit that actually matters to you try catch finally okay so we're thinking about a try catch method or statement rather you use two catch blocks one to catch the exceptions um, the SQL exception and the second to catch any other type of exception which of the following places would be the best choice for closing the SQL connection object okay so very long question but all you have to think about is try catch finally block and closing okay so closing think of it kind of like cleaning up what is the answer to this question everyone's saying D finally block yeah fantastic you guys are correct it is it is this D finally okay so in those long questions they'll ask you all sorts of weird stuff they give whole paragraph descriptions you don't have to that's the especially now because we haven't got into the database section yet um, but you don't have to know what SQL means um, you know they do this all the time in in these kinds of multiple choice questions where they'll give you this whole long thing and it turns out that only a few parts that they say allow you to answer the question okay so focus on what you do know in these questions you do know what a try catch finally statement is okay you know the try is used to test the code the catch catches whatever errors occur and the finally is used for cleanup okay the finally is used for cleanup so when they say where do we close the database connection they don't even have to say database they just say where do we close in a try catch finally Okay, just those two pieces of information, you should think, okay, finally. All right? Because closing is kind of like cleaning up. Think of them in the same way. Okay. Because you're just closing your connection, you know, removing things from memory. Okay. Cool. So yeah, the answer is in a finally block. I'm glad some of you guys got it, so that's good. Okay. You are developing a C sharp program, you write the following code. Um again I can't read it like this so I'm just gonna code it up okay so let me remove this so they have int count equals zero I think it was yeah int count equals zero while count is less than five okay they create a little while loop nothing hectic so far wait did I spell int wrong no it's fine okay int count equals zero while count less than five if count equals equals three if count equals equals three break okay count plus plus okay and they're asking you how many times will the control how many times will we enter the while loop okay so how many times will the while loop be executed is what they're asking all right okay someone says b let me see what is b four hmm. any other answers we've got a we've got two b's so far and we've got a bit of a table that's interesting it's a five by five table, so I'm going to take that as meaning you answered A, Connor. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so, um, okay, so B is the general consensus. Let's that that is correct. That is correct. Let's print out so that we can see what's going on. Ooh, ooh! Remember, it's asking how many times will we enter the while loop. Ooh, this was a tricky one. 
this was a tricky one. Okay, so you see it prints out one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Let me print out before the break. Okay, now it's going to print out four numbers. Okay, it prints out four numbers. So yeah, um, the answer is the answer is B. Okay, the answer is B. But it could be a little bit tricky if you read the if statement wrong. Okay. Um, but yeah, you guys are correct. It is four. What does the... Oof. Wait, are you ready? So... <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll go... We went through this with Thelma earlier, Yuvia. Um, but we, we can do it one more time. Okay. Okay. Um... We've covered this lots now, though. Um, I, I haven't done it this way before quite. Maybe it's a good way of doing it. Okay. So you see here. Here. I say 10 equals equals 10. Let's use the exact one that they use in the thing. So I'll say int count equals 0. Okay. And I'll say count equals equals 10. Okay. What does this equals equals mean? Okay. All this equals equals does is it takes the thing on the left and compares it to the thing on the right and and if they're equal it will return true if they are not equal it will return false okay so int count equals zero so count is zero that's not the same as 10 right if I make count 10 then this returns true if I make count 1 it will return false. If I make the right thing one, because then it's the same as count, it will return true. Okay. Yuvia, do you understand? I Yeah, so it's just it's literally just saying while they're the same. Okay. We have seen it quite a lot before though, like in if statements and things like that, right? Um so it's like if I say int count equals six and I say if count equals equals six, okay, then here I would say console count is counts value is six, okay, is equal to six, I should say. Okay, so this is all it's doing. Okay, so if currently counts equals six, so it comes here, it says if counts equals equals six, so if counts is the same as six, then you can execute this code. But if I make it five, so counts is no longer six, you can see it prints out nothing. Okay, that's all it's doing. All right. And equals equals always means that. It doesn't matter where you put it. If it's in an if statement, or while statement, whatever. It's just saying if this is the same as this. Okay, or while this is the same as this. Anything like that. Okay, so, yeah, the answer here is four. You are developing a C, but what, who got that? Some people actually got that. Sachin and Azam. Well done, guys. Okay, so you are developing a C sharp program. You write the following code: int i equals six. Do ooh, okay. A bit. This this is a bit tough. Okay, so let's let's write it out. Int i equals six. I won't run the code yet. Um, okay. Do. Um, they do a whole bunch of stuff here. They'll say if i equals equals three wait they use the term count don't they no they say i okay break and then they say oh they do they do print it out okay and then we say while Do they say less than or equal to 5 or less than 5? Less than or equal to 5. Okay. Cool. It doesn't end up making much of a difference, but whatever. 
Okay, so they're asking how many times does this loop execute? How many times does this code run? Okay, I don't know. So how are you answering 13? Is that is this answer for 13? Okay, so do we have any answers for this? So let me look at the code. How many times will this code run, guys? How many times will this code run? Okay, so let's let's think about how this works, okay? So in, instead of asking you this, I'll ask you something else, okay? Does yeah yeah you're right well five to ten minutes um so what is the difference between a while loop and a do while loop what is the difference between a while loop and a do while loop anyone That's true. You know, I start the calls five minutes early, though, so people have time to join. Um, do while checks at the bottom. Okay, yes. So, Ham, you're correct. A do while loop checks at the bottom of the loop. Okay, so it checks here. All right. So, this code, okay, regardless of what the condition is. So, you see the condition is checked here. Okay, so what they're trying to do here is confuse you because they'll say, int i equals 6 and then we have while and our condition is while i is less than or equal to 5 okay so if this was a normal while loop and the condition was at the top this wouldn't run okay but this is a do while loop okay so what a do while loop will do is it'll go int i equals 6 then we say do it runs this code regardless. It runs this code regardless of what the value of i is. It doesn't even check the value of i yet. Okay, it just runs. It sees do and it goes, okay, I'm doing it. It's, it does this. And then when it gets to the end of this, it checks. Okay, and then it checks and it sees, okay, i, um, i is not less than or equal to five, so I'm gonna stop, okay? But you'll see it runs once, okay? See, it runs once. Oh, Connor got this right. Cool. Oh, the last question was also about this, right? Um, but this was testing whether or not you can read a while, do while loop, and the last question is testing whether or not you can define it, right? But this question, the answer is um, B. One. Okay. Why? Okay, so let's go through it one more time. Don't have much time left though. So int i equals 6. So we create a variable and its value is 6. We start a do while loop. So literally read it as in English. Okay, so we say do. So the computer just does it. It does it. It doesn't check anything yet. It says if i equals 3, does i equal 3? No, it doesn't. Okay, it prints out i. i is 6. And then it adds 1 to i, so it makes i 7. Okay. Then it checks. While i is less than or equal to 5, and it sees, okay, i is not less than or equal to 5, and so it just continues down here. Okay. Continue. All right. So this prints out once, you can see. Prints out once, and it executes once. Okay. Regardless of what the condition is, I could make i 100, it will print once. Okay. But if I make it less than, so if I make it like 4, now it'll print twice. Twice. Okay. So the, the answer is B there. Okay. You are writing a C-sharp program and need to select an appropriate repetition structure for your requirements. You need to make sure that the test for the termination condition is performed at the bottom of the loop rather than at the top. Which repetition structure should you use? Do well. Awesome. Yeah, this one's easy. We've done this lots. Okay. I'm not going to spend more time on that. Okay. Um, 15. You are developing an algorithm for a retail website. 
You need to calculate discounts on certain items based on the quantity purchased. You develop the following decision table to calculate the discount. If a customer buys 50 units of an item, what discount will be applicable to the purchase? Okay. Yay. Ah, fantastic. Okay, I'm glad you guys all said 15%. You see they gave you the number 50. So maybe some of you were a bit worried initially because it's like less than 50, right? But yeah, um, that's cool. Okay, so... Yeah, as long as you realized and didn't panic and you realized that 50 is not less than 50. Okay, 50 is not less than 50. It's equal to 50. So yeah, the answer is C, 15%. Well done, guys. Good, good work on that. All right. This one, very hectic. We do not have time. Um, but we are going to, we still have to go through the three scenarios. Okay, that is true. You've just, yeah, that's, it's B. But we are going to see, I, I want to now cover this flowchart one more time. Next, the first thing we'll do next lesson is translate that flowchart step by step into C sharp code so you can see that it's not so scary. Okay, really isn't scary. So yeah, we'll, we'll cover that next time. Let's go to the last question. You are writing a C sharp program that needs to iterate a fixed number of times. You need to make sure that your code is easy to understand and maintain, even when the loop body contains complex code. Which of the following C sharp statements provide the best solution for this requirement? Yay. Okay, cool. Ooh. So it's it's we're not working with collections here, right? We're not working with arrays, so don't be thinking about a for each. Okay, so what this is asking um, let me phrase it again. We do have four minutes left or so, so um, let me phrase it again. So remember when we first created a while loop, Connor? We created something like this, right? We said initialization, while, um, condition, and then somewhere in the body of the loop we said increments, right? This is what a while loop looked like, okay? And you can see that this has code all over the place, right? It's not very neat. Okay. Um, so if you had a lot of code here, so if I, here I had very complex code all over the place and it was very long, this would be very hard to read. Okay. So a for loop provides a very neat way of writing the same thing, right? You can, it's it's much neater and it all goes in, you know, one sort of convenient place. Okay, something like that. And then you just put your very complex code here. Okay, so yeah, the for loop is what allows for a neater way of writing this. Uh, yeah, the the answer is B. Okay, B. All right, cool. So overall, um, so how did you guys feel? We have like three minutes left. How did you guys feel about it? Is there anything in particular that you would like me to add to next week's lesson? to sort of revise in a lot of detail. So we're gonna go over that that flow, flow chart, okay? And see exactly how to read the flow chart step by step. Um, but otherwise, okay, cool, buy a good, you think it's a fair test. That's good, that's good. Okay. Go over the operators, all right. Okay, I'll add that. So um, next week, we'll go over operators in the first little bit. So equals, equals, less than or equals, greater than or equals, greater than, less than, um, whatever other ones we want to do. And I'll go over the flow charts, and then we'll cover the last two scenarios. And then we are done with chapter one until we revise it later on in the year. Okay. Um, any other requests? So Sachin says we should go over operators, so we will. Any, anyone else? 
Anything in particular you're worried about? Okay. You guys seem to be doing good on repetition structures, so that's nice. Maybe do... Yeah, we, we are going over flow charts already as well. Because um, we will be doing that. We'll go through... Uh, yeah, Thelma, the first part of next week's lesson, we'll be going through this whole flow chart step by step. This whole one here. Okay, so we've got that. Awesome. Okay, so I'll remember flowcharts and operators are the first two topics for next week's lesson. Okay, and then we'll cover the last two scenarios in the assessment, and then we will be done with chapter one. Okay, which is the largest chapter and probably the most difficult for, so I wrote in the wrong, in, wrote in the space. Oh, okay. It was a good test. Go over the finally. Okay, you want to go over try catch finally again. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. All right. The the try catch. So so what I'll do um, instead of going over the try catch finally first, I'm going to go over the first part of chapter two, and well, kind of in a way we will be doing factorials when we go through that flow chart, right? Because it is factorials. So we will we will be doing that as well. Um, yeah, yeah, we're done now anyway, Thomas. So I'm going to close the meeting soon. Um, cool. Okay, see you guys next week. We will still start at two unless someone says on the WhatsApp group something it, that two doesn't work for them. Okay, so two o'clock next week, Wednesday. Okay, bye bye everyone. Cheers. Enjoy the rest of your week and stay safe.